at 6.30. But right now on BBC Two, the scores are in. to you so this is it the marathon which reaches a sprint finish the last gasp attempts to survive or be promoted and enjoying those battles with me today garth crooks and steve claridge and i can promise you there'll be nothing hung around here decisions are final uh, the final score in the championship playoff in the first leg at bloomfield road was 2-1 to blackpool more on that shortly but first and i can't tell you how dramatic things have been if you've only just joined us from the red button let's go straight to ellen road let harry grayson tell you everything you need to know about events there. Well, you know, Gabby, a few minutes ago, Leeds were down, but clearly not out. Duffy's goal on 47 minutes, Gradle sent off in the first half, surely no hope. But then a remarkable fight back by the 10 men. Uh, Jonathan Housen's tremendous goal on 59 minutes, and then a very bad mistake, it has to be said, by the Rovers goalkeeper. Eventually let in Beckford, who scored from close range. Beckford is the captain today. Leeds playing with 10 men, but playing far better than Bristol Rovers. They've got a sniff of the championship. They lead 2-1. And, of course, all that matters to, at the Den is that they get a win, the home side, Millwall. There's been a goal, John Anderson. Yes, they're 3-1 up now, Millwall. Steve Morrison has got his second of the game. A wonderful dip, or rather it was Neil Harris, I should say, rather than Morrison, who got on the end of a long ball forward and dipped a sensational volley into the net. It's uh, quite extraordinary, the atmosphere here. There was, uh, I think, false news of a goal. The crowd started getting up and down, and then they sat down again, and then that ball was lashed into the net. But uh, it looks as if Millwall are keeping their part of the bargain and now absolutely praying that Bristol Rovers can do something in the final minutes at Elland Road. Swindon took the lead through Danny Ward. Morrison equalised through a penalty. But uh, it's now a, a known goal by uh, Greer. Millwall went 2-1 up, it's now 3-1, but as I say, they are waiting for a miracle at Ellen Road. 22 for the season for Morrison and Millwall about 20 minutes ago were in that second spot when Leeds uh, were behind against Bristol Rovers. About 23 minutes ago, Charlton were in that second automatic promotion spot. Uh, they're at Boundary Park against Oldham this afternoon. Mark Weather can explain how and why that happened. Oldham nil, Charlton 2. Time's a great healer, that's what Charlton fans hope. For a period of about 10 minutes, Leeds, Millwall and Swindon left the back door open and Charlton were left to drool over the tasty morsels of encounters at Crystal Palace, Portsmouth and Derby. But then the two goals gained by Nicky Bailey and Jose Semedo are cancelled out by other events. It was like being put, uh, the fridge door being closed and being put back on the Atkins diet of the playoff. They'll want another time machine now. Time running out. Old and nil, Charlton 2. Uh, thank you very much, Mark. Uh, let's go to the Pirelli, where uh, the atmosphere won't be uh, quite party-like, Steve Lee. It's the bottom of League Two. It's an exit from the Football League for Grimsby, it's looking like. Yes, this is turning into a wake for Grimsby. Their nervous-looking manager, Neil Woods, and the 2,000-plus fans have travelled down on a chilly, damp day in the Midlands. Two goals from Sean Harrod, one from Greg Pearson. Burton have played very well indeed. Grimsby have squandered their chances, and they're going down with a whimper, really. And the atmosphere in the ground is not very good indeed. It was pretty ugly in the first half, with one Grimsby fan ran on and confronted his own goalkeeper. Now we have stewards and police surrounding the Grimsby fan. I hope hope we don't get further pitch invasions, but uh, that looks a possibility, I suppose. But at the moment, Grimsby going out of the Football League after 100 years. It's Burton 3, Grimsby 0. OK, let's just do a quick recap, because um, that full, first 40 minutes at Leeds United, at Elland Road, very unremarkable, yes, really. Yes. Um, not particularly good performance from Leeds no. United. And then the sending off, that's when it all changed. Yeah, I mean, well, obviously, and, and with the gold stuff to half-time, it's almost focused their minds, because up until then, it was a pretty tepid performance. They'd almost settled for the draw. And, but it was know, a disallowed goal, actually, which led to the sending off, wasn't that it? That was... the whole thing, didn't it? Well, it, it, it certainly changed the complexion of the game, didn't it? Beckford scores what I think is a good goal because I think he's onside. It's, it's, it's knocked off. And there's an altercation between Gradle and, I think, the centre-half, Jones. And it appears that Gradle stamps on him. Now, that's what, I, that's what we think. Now, at that point, all hell breaks loose because the referee 
having been told by the linesman he's stamped on him, sends the player off. The player loses it. And I mean loses it. He wants to confront the referee, but his captain Beckford won't let him. And now his centre half gets involved and says, you've got to go. It ends up the security taking him off the field. It, it was an incredible scene to behold. It ended up security coming around the pitch and, and taking him off. Uh, uh, it really was uh, incredible then that Jermaine Beckford is the man, ironically, the man who was on the transfer list because he wanted to be self-imposed uh, yeah. in January after all that FA Cup mm. success, yeah. ends up staying well, and ends up potentially scoring the goal that absolutely. takes him into the championship. He's, he's, he's played, put in a very responsible performance. He's the captain today. It's a bit of a masterstroke by Simon there, giving him that responsibility, which, it, which is... Um, which is uh, he's certainly, I think he's taken that on board. Mm. And of course, he hasn't, been a, he hasn't started the last couple of games, but uh, no, he's the one, if it stays like this, and we, you, know, you don't want to second guess anything, who will be the one that's. Well, you know, they're being pinned back at the moment up. a bit, aren't they, Leeds? Led, and yeah, I, I think he's led the line brilliantly today, Beth. It's a captain's performance, but it's not over. It's not over. They've, They've got, got to close the way game. To go. And as well, we should remind you that um, Leeds, because of all that argy bargy and the Max Gradle incident, ended up finishing about six or seven minutes later than the other teams mm. in League One. Yeah. So they're going to have six or seven minutes more time uh, at the end. Is that time to hold on to a lead or to, to get one back? Well, these were the scenes uh, at lunchtime in the Championship pl uh, playoff match between Blackpool and Nottingham Forest at Bloomfield Road. Uh, what a match that was as well. Darren Fletcher reports. It's advantage Blackpool after a competitive and enthralling first leg between two teams committed to attack in tricky conditions at Bloomfield Road. Billy Davis made seven changes to the Forest lineup and then saw his team strike first when Cohen scored an excellent goal from the angle of the penalty area after 13 minutes. Blackpool equalised through Keith Southern shortly after and then saw the visitors go close through Anderson, Blackstock and Morgan before half time. But the key moment saw Perch foul Campbell in the penalty area 11 minutes after the restart. Referee Phil Dowd correctly pointing to the spot, confidently dispatched by Charlie Adam for his 18th goal of the season. Forrest almost snaps a draw in the final minute of stoppage time but Jilks made an excellent save to deny Cohen to provide a slender advantage ahead of Tuesday's second leg at the city ground. Well, you can see there the score at Edgeley Park. Uh, Stockport uh, down by three Tranmere goals to nil. Joss Labadie there on 76 minutes with a third. Let's go and speak to Andy May now. He can tell us all about Tranmere's fight for survival. And Tranmere almost scoring a fourth just then. They're on the attack and looking to really steal this victory. Labadie tucking away the third, as you mentioned, after a terrible error from county keeper Rigby, who failed to keep hold of a loose ball from a corner. The two Ians, Thomas Moore and Goodison, are also on the score sheet after scrapping close-range goals. This is like a home game for Tranmere. Their fans have two of the four stands here at Edgeley Park. They can't wait for full time and neither can a nervous-looking Les Parry just below me. Stockport nil, Tranmere three. Uh, let's go to Ellen Road. Harry Grayson leads almost sealed it there. They did, yes. The ten men are playing magnificently at the moment, it has to be said. Bromby hit the poster with a header there and uh, Bristol Rovers are in trouble there at the back. But you just realised that you pointed out 15 minutes left, Gabby, here. Uh, let's go to St James Park. Uh, matters at the bottom of League One. Exeter desperately need a goal, Hamish Marshall. They desperately do, and the goalkeeper Paul Jones has just made a fantastic save to keep the score at 1-1. This result means Exeter are going down. They've come back from conceding an early goal to get on terms through Matt Taylor, but uh, they're really having the better side. But this is a day when it's only the result that matters, and it's not going their way. They've got one goal they need and it would really change things dramatically but the clock is ticking and as it stands Exeter are going to League, what? League 2. And if they score that, Gillingham are in big trouble. But let me tell you about a goal at Wembley. Barrow have equalised against Stevenage in the FA Trophy. Uh, Stevenage were down to ten men. Stevenage looking to do the League and Cup double. Uh, but Lee Mechavilli on 79 minutes has put Barrow right back in it. They haven't won it since 1990. Let's go to Adams Park. As I mentioned, Gillingham uh, could be in trouble. Joe Spate. Thanks, Gabby. Yes, Gillingham began the day with their faith in their own hands, but now their destiny will be determined elsewhere. Gillingham are 3-0 down here at Adams Park. Remember, Wickham down already, but Wickham have been far more impressive. Goals either side of half time, a long-range belter from Matt Phillips, a header from defender Alan Bennett, then Kevin Betsy has just made it 3-0. The Jersey here have been urged on by 2,500 travelling fans, but faces are plenty now of nerves, anxiety and tensions, and plenty of mobile phones and radios being used. I have to say as well, when that third goal went in for Wickham. Several Gillingham fans made for the exits. They haven't seen their team win away this season and they might see them in League 2 next year. It's 3-0 with 12 minutes to go. And it looks like Morecambe have sealed their place in the playoffs. At Christie Park, Richard Ascombe. 
It does, Gabby. Morecambe won. Aldershot nil. It's been nervy and disjointed here for much of the game, but the home side do have the breakthrough they need. Great work from Paul Mollard setting up Gary Hunter, who struck the ball home from the centre of the box. Before that, Aldershot with Damien Spencer, a bustling, powerful focal point, had been playing with a freedom Morecambe couldn't find. But it's all changed since the goal, and the home side, who just need a point to make the playoffs, are nearly there. Dagenham and Redbridge also just inside the playoff places at the Darlington Arena. Steve Sutton. Yes, they lead Darlington by two goals to nil. They needed to win today to ensure that playoff place. They're taking care of business. The first half header from John Nurse gave them the lead on 75 minutes. Uh, Josh Scott side-footing in from close range after a good run from Paul Benson. It looks as if Dagenham and Redbridge season is about to be extended. 2-0 they lead. So it looks like Northampton and Bury are going to miss out at Sixfield Stadium. Lindsay Hooper. Yeah, Northampton nil, Bury one here. But as you rightly pointed out, Gabby, uh, Bury can do all they want. But it doesn't matter if the, the results stand as they are as at Morecambe and Dagenham and Redbridge. Uh, fill you in on the goal. Ryan Lowe got his 18th goal of the season. It was in extra time after the first half, 48 minutes, that goal was scored. A lofted ball from um, Andy Bishop, uh, found Andy Bishop rather, and he's sideways. Bad control, really, but the ball fell to Lowe. He scored. Um, very bad defending from Northampton but they came out here this second half and they've really been playing well there has been a red card shown to James Poole from Berry. so Berry currently playing with 10 men that was for a foul on John Johnson and um, Berry just having a free kick here at the moment but I'd say it's more Northampton it's Northampton nil Berry one Big news at the bottom of League One at St James Park, Hamish Marshall. The GFC Exeter are staying up, and if things stay this way, they are. Ryan Harley has scored from the edge of the penalty area to put Exeter 2-1 up in this match, and this result has this score has massive ramifications elsewhere because Exeter would stay above Tranmere and they would be in League One next season. They've now got eight minutes plus stoppages to defend this score, but Exeter may just have a League One lifeline. Uh, and what ramifications this has elsewhere. Let's go to Adams Park. Joe Spate, of course, Gillingham had it all in their own hands, as you say, and now they're below the line. Has the message got through? It has. It's now turned deathly silent amongst those Chillingham fans who've stayed here at Adams Park. They've made their changes, but they're playing very poorly here. And I can see no way back in this game now for Chillingham. It will take an extraordinary fight back. And I think their hopes of survival will lie with events elsewhere, particularly Huddersfield coming back at Exeter at St James's Park. The Chillingham fans starting to turn now on their players and the manager in particular, Mark Stimson. It's 3-0 here with 10 minutes to go and they might well be heading down. No away wins all season for Gillingham. Let's go to Saltergate. Last match there before they move to a new ground. Alan Biggs, they're signing off with a bit of a flourish. Yes, yeah, signing off with a bit of style. Jack Lester may well have scored the last ever goal at Saltergate. He's equalised against Bournemouth. It's 1-1. And Drew Talbot, who was substituted a moment or two earlier, will be relieved. Jack Lester's just headed against the post. He almost got another. Talbot relieved because he put through his own net in Bournemouth's favour just before half-time. He didn't want to go down in history for that. He will be relieved looking on that Leicester, with a cracking shot from 18 yards, has, has equalised and has almost put Chesterfield in front at 2-1. But it's 1-1 still. And there'll be massive relief, I imagine, at Underhill as well. Tony Lockwood. Well, they've not played like a team under pressure. Paul Fairclough back in charge after the sacking of Ian Hendon. It's been a very assured display, Gabby. Ed Upson headed against the crossbar and then saw a strike cleared off the goal line. Mark Hughes blazing over with that Rochdale goal at his mercy. Surely job done thanks to Grimsby's scoreline at Burton and barring an extraordinary turnaround, Barnet's Football League status is safe. It's Barnet nil, Rochdale nil. Goal news at the den, John Anderson. Well, Swindon have pulled one back, but it may not make any difference. It's Millwall three, Swindon two now. And the goal scorer, Billy Painter, with his 29th goal of the season. A free kick dead centre fired in, and Painter was curiously left completely unmarked about eight yards out and managed to flick his header beyond David Ford. It's cut Millwall's lead, but of course, we're still waiting here, everybody, for news from Ellen Rowe. But Swindon have got themselves back in the game. It's Millwall three, Swindon two. And let me just tell you that after the uh, goal which put Millwall 2-1 on uh, up, there were a few people onto the pitch here and there was a long stoppage. So this game may well go as long as the one at Ellen Road. Certainly I'd be surprised if there was any less than five minutes stoppage time here. It's 3-2 to Millwall.
Uh, thank you very much, John Anderson. Uh, let's go to Elland Road and hear from their squeaky bottom time, Harry Gration, and uh, a moment there for Leeds fans uh, to feel well, to have their hearts in their mouths. Very much so. The ball went right across the face of the goal. It looked as if uh, one of the Rovers players might just get a touch, but he didn't in the end. So I reckon we've got about seven or eight minutes uh, left in this game of normal time, maybe two or three more minutes on top of that as well. So ten minutes for Rovers to apply the pressure. You'd expect that to happen now. Lead down to ten men they have what they hold and that is a place at the moment in the championship at the moment Hartlepool are staying in league one but a goal from Brentford at Griffin Park and they would be down and John Southall a three-point deduction this week has meant they're in this position because of fielding an ineligible player it's just incredible the way things have worked out at the bottom there we didn't realistically think Hartlepool would be dragged into this no we didn't it would be an extraordinary week if they were to go down if Brentford were to score in the final five minutes of the game the away fans at the moment are extremely tense because, as you say, if Brentford score and everything remains as it is, then Hartlepool will go down. I can also tell you, play has stopped for a moment here. You've had a couple of people, young children, really, on the pitch for the last couple of minutes. The goalkeeper, Scott Flinders, basically picked them up and chucked them off the pitch, but we still haven't restarted the game yet, so we will have quite a lot of added time on here. So the drama, I think, will continue probably for seven, eight, nine more minutes but as it stands at the moment, it's Brentford nil, Hartlepool nil, and that will just be enough for them. A few worrying incidents of people on the pitch, obviously last week and this week uh, at the Pirelli as well. Steve Lee, uh, crowds kind of moving themselves onto the pitch there. Yes, it's a, a very ugly, sort of tense situation here under grey funereal skies. It's obviously a wake for Grimsby and their followers after 100 years of Football League football, but the stewards and the police are forming sort of human barricades to keep the fans back. We had one idiot fan from the Grimsby end who confronted his own goalkeeper early on. That was pretty ugly. We've got some Grimsby fans who've infiltrated the Burton areas, and that's not clever either. But there isn't a great amount of police here, and they're keeping the fans back, but it does look ugly at the moment as we head with what seven minutes left Grimsby's uh, football league tenure is ending but uh, this is an ugly situation <laughs> uh, 37 goals uh, for Ricky Lambert this season Southampton two South End uh, one uh, can we just uh, take stock a moment let's have a quick uh, 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 let's have a look at the, the crowds on the pitch first of all right. sorry there I couldn't decide which way to go in this there's chat but let's talk about the crowds on the pitch what can the referee do well, potentially at Burton there's a, there's a, there's a possibly ugly uh, situation on the horizon there are fans on this on, on the sort of the, 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 the gravel verge just behind the goal and um, you expect them to come onto the pitch once the game's over. Now, we've already had one incident. It's very important that the referee, in my opinion, informs both the captains when the ball gets out of play, when I'm going to blow up so you can get off the field. The most important thing is the health and safety of the players. OK, let's go back to Underhill. A goal, Tony Lockwood. Yes, it's a goal to Barnett and celebrations. The shot that came in from Albert Jarrett from 18 yards out. And Albert Adoma was there. The ball deflecting in and, well, joyous scenes. It's come to the final day and, in the end, they've got the victory. So, despite results elsewhere, Barnett play Football League football next season. Adoma's goal, Barnett won, Rochdale nil. I can tell you that first division playoff there in Scotland, Edry are down, Brecon beating them 3-1 on aggregate. Um, uh, let's, though, go back to Elland Road and catch up with Harry Gration. Uh, a period there of real Rovers pressure. Yes, they are really beginning to dominate because, obviously, they've got 11, Leeds have got 10. Leeds are fighting like tigers at the back there. But every time Rovers go forward now, there's an anxious moment, to say the least, for the Leeds defence. But they're keeping on track. The 10 men still there with their foot in the championship. But every time I look up, Leeds are getting further and further back. I, I appreciate Leeds have played with uh, ten men for the best part of an hour. Um, and it looks like they're playing from memory right now. They've got to get them, shape themselves, get themselves back in the zone and defend properly. When they get the ball, still put Bristol Rose under pressure. Put the ball in the last ten minutes in the areas that's going to turn them round, probably in the corners. You've got to get through this game. They've had 20 minutes of high-tempo play. It's taken so much out of them. You just subconsciously, because you're so nervous, because of the situation, you take a step back, you can't help it. We've both been in that situation. That's what they've done. Now it's all about them hanging on. 
OK, let's go to the den. It's still 3-2 to Millwall, remember. Uh, Swindon, were they, they were coming back into it last time we checked in, John Anderson. Have they been uh, creating more problems for Millwall? Not really, no. It's Millwall who are looking the uh, more likely side to score and uh, but for a better final ball into the box. They might have done uh, on a couple of occasions. Uh, chances falling to Morrison and to Hackett. There's uh, extreme nerves here. A lot of the fans... Uh, right in front of me, keep looking at me and saying, what's the score at Leeds? And I'm holding up two fingers of one hand and one on the other. And, of course, it's being greeted with uh, rather miserable faces. But uh, it looks as if Millwall have kept their part of the bargain as we enter stoppage time, of which there could be quite a lot uh, with Millwall leading. But, of course, uh, things are conspiring against them at the moment. But it's been such an astonishing afternoon that you wouldn't bet against maybe something dramatic still to come. Nobody is writing anything off until that fat lady sings. Let's go to St James Park, uh, where I'm sure uh, they're hoping the final whistle, never mind the fat lady, is going to blow any minute, Hamish Marshall. Well, I can tell you, Gabby, we're 50 seconds into four minutes of added time, and it's going to be the longest four minutes for Exeter City fans, although it has to be said they are currently camped in the Huddersfield half. They lead by two goals to one, and simply that means that Exeter will stay up with this result. They knew at the start of the day a win would be good enough for them to be in League One again next season and it looks as if that's going to be the case. They have left it late, though, but that goal from Ryan Harley will go down in folklore. But I will also say as well, Paul Jones, the goalkeeper, made a fantastic save a minute or two beforehand, and that mustn't be forgotten. Two and a half minutes to go. Exeter hanging on and staying in this division as it stands. Some pretty nasty scenes uh, there at the Pirelli Stadium, Steve Lee. We're seeing a very menacing group of, of men uh, approaching the pitch. Well, this has been on the cards from more or less the start. The police are now moving in in force, trying to keep the Grimsby fans off the pitch. They're coming in from another side too, uh, from the Burton end, and the police have now surrounded the whole end. Some Grimsby fans already got into a fracas with some of the stewards, and uh, they're not making this easy for themselves or the club. It's a proud club. If you're going to go down, go down with pride and dignity, but they're not doing that at the moment. This is really ugly. The police out in force. The football is almost an afterthought thought here. We've got a minute and a half to go. The sooner they get off the pitch, really, the players, the better. This is not a way to go down. OK, let's go to Edgeley Park. It looks like Les Parry has saved Tranmere. And what an incredible story that is, Andy May. And what incredible scenes here. All the Tranmere fans pretty much from the two stands here at Edgeley Park. They've had two stands today, are on the pitch. They've done all they can, Tranmere Rovers, on the final day. They've beaten bottom of the table, Stockport 3-0, thanks to close-range scrappy goals from Labadee, Thomas Moore and Goodison. Rovers fans are still waiting with the players and management team for official confirmation that they will be playing League One football next season. What a job Les Parry has done for Rovers. His first game in charge was a 1-0 defeat against Stockport. Today they've beaten them 3-0. Thank you, Andy. And the final whistle has gone to Underhill. Barnett have survived. Tony Locke with these are the scenes. You'd think they had won promotion, a crowd invasion, and after a desperate run of six straight defeats, Barnett sign off with a victory. Albert Jarrett shot deflecting in, and Barnett stay up. They've beaten Rochdale by a goal to nil. I imagine they are desperate for the final whistle at Ellen Road, but Harry Gration, we said they were going to have a slightly longer half anyway. Have we got any indication of injury time? Well, 90 minutes up. We're just waiting for the ball to be uh, put up, actually. He's taking his time to do that. Everyone wants him to do the same, actually, but he's refusing to do that at the moment. Uh, there's been a bit of a delay. They're just still battling like mad, I have to say, and they're looking good, I have to say. Also, there's not been any pressure, really, on the Leeds defence in the last few minutes. So they're within minutes, seconds possibly, of being in the championship. Well, they can't do anything more at the den. It's full time there. John Anderson. It's Millwall 3, Swindon 2. The Lions keeping their part of the bargain with the win they needed. But at the moment, events elsewhere are conspiring against them. Swindon took the lead through Danny Ward's early volley. Millwall levelled Steve Morrison's penalty 1-1 at half-time. Millwall went ahead when Swindon skipper Gordon Greer deflected the ball into his own net. A stunning volley by Morrison made it 3-1. Billy Painter pulled one back for Swindon. But it looks like the play for these two sides. Millwall three, Swindon two. 
But it's not over yet at Ellen Road, but it is at Boundary Park. Mark Webber, final scenes there. We're looking at and Charlton uh, resigned to the playoffs. Uh, yeah, Oldham nil, Charlton 2. Charlton fans crooning, K-Sara, Sara, whatever will be, will be. As they close their eyes and dream, it was still 10 past four, a time when they would have been promoted. The sat-nav is still required, though. The shirts can't go in the wash yet. The lucky charm still needed. Charlton are in the playoffs. Oldham nil, Charlton 2. Uh, let's go to St James Park. Hamish Marshall, Exeter survive. Indeed they do. They've won by two goals to one and the celebrations have begun. They did it the hard way, giving away an early goal, but they got on top thanks to goals from Matt Taylor and Ryan Hurley with Harley with the decisive goal eight minutes from time. Huddersfield can still go up, but their celebrations will need to be kept for Wembley. Exeter are safe. And to Ellen Road in the dying moments of that match, Harry Gration and Jermaine Beckford, Beckford saying his goodbyes, perhaps. Absolutely. The He's been brilliant, Gabby, I have to say. He's captain the side really, really well today. He's got the vital goal and every single member of the Leeds United backroom staff hugging him. Yes, he's played his last one, but Leeds lead 2-1. Seconds left. Oh, it's not over yet, though, at Ellen Road, I can tell you. And at Darlington Arena, uh, it looks like Dagenham and Redbridge, Steve Sutton, have done enough. They're in the playoffs. Yes, they have. They've beaten Darlington by two goals to nil. Their season goes on. Darlington's next season is non-league. John Nurse, a header in the first half. Josh Scott, a simple tap-in in the second half, has done the trick for Dagenham. They win by two goals to nil. I can tell you, we're looking at these scenes here at the Den. They're hanging on the crowd. They're waiting, waiting to see if Bristol Rovers can get a goal because if they can, Millwall are going to the Championship without the playoffs. Uh, let's go to Adam Park, where uh, Wickham already down, but Gillingham could be joining them. They are, I'm hearing now. Joe Spates, Gillingham are down. Yes, for the second time in three years, Gillingham relegated on the final day of a League One season. Utter despair for the 2,000 or so Gillingham fans. League Two playoff winners last year, but they'll be back in the fourth tier of English football next season. And alongside Wickham, who are by far and away the better side here, Matt Phillips, Alan Bennett and Kevin Betsy scored their goals. There was one astounding miss from Jill top scorer Simeon Jackson when they were just one goal behind. It might have been such a different story if that chance had been taken. But they've not won away all season. They've been outplayed on their travels again here and they've been made to pay. Gillingham are down. And that is because, of course, uh, Hartlepool uh, drew nil-nil at uh, Griffin Park with uh, Brentford. Let's go to the Pirelli. Uh, Grimsby are down. Steve Lee. Yes, Burton three, Grimsby nil. The referee, Tony Bates, did a very sensible thing. He quickly ushered the players into a corner and got them off very quickly because, as I've been predicting all afternoon, there was a pitch invasion, a few scuffles, and now a line of police right across the Pirelli. They're keeping the rival fans apart and the Grimsby fans being pushed back. So there we are. It's ended in an ugly fashion. But Grimsby are down. Burton 3, Grimsby nil. It's all over at Elland Road. Harry Gration, what a story. What a season. What an incredible game, Gabby. They were down and out. Worked the lead on 47 minutes when Duffy scored. Gradle had been sent off. An astonishing comeback. Housen's great goal. And then Beckford, captain for the day, scored the goal that he will remember all his life. There are thousands and thousands of Leeds United supporters on the pitch. They're back out of one wilderness. They're back into, well, one step away from the big time. And Leeds United can celebrate because they've showed so much grit, so much determination today. And Simon Grayson must be a very, very relieved man because in the first half, Leeds didn't play well. Gradle sending off, put immense pressure on them. But uh, an inspired decision to make... Jermaine Beckford, the captain, has really paid off. He got a wonderful reception when he was substituted just a, a few moments ago. And now virtually every Leeds United player is surrounded by all the Leeds fans who've uh, made what's become a traditional, if slightly worrying, a pitch invasion at the end of the season. But they're going back to the Championship. And these scenes, I think, just about sum up their pent-up frustration over many, many years. And... Uh, they feel that this is the step that they need to rebuild this club into what it used to be a few years ago, a wonderful, wonderful football club that was the pride of uh, England in many regards. And everybody celebrating now, all the players being uh, escorted from the pitch or um, shoulder high at the moment, I can see at least three or four of them. And the Leeds fans, really, all 40,000 of them, are able to reflect on this wonderful, wonderful scenes for them. Leeds, back in the Championship, Gabby.
Thank you very much, Harry Grayson. What incredible uh, relief for those Leeds fans. I mean, this is a team 10 years ago were a game away from a Champions League final. Uh, their decline has been incredible. This is a step back to where those fans... And, you know, when you look at those seats, this is the third tier of English football, Carl. There's think, nearly 40,000 fans and I think, there. And I think genuine football fan would recognise that Leeds are where they, they need to be and they belong to be in the, two, in the, in the second flight of top British football, and quite rightly. Um, it, pivotal moments in this game. The goal that was disallowed by Beckford, it responded in a... A spark of aggression from Gradle that got him sent off. Housen comes on and is absolutely outstanding and they go on to do the rest. Well, unfortunately, those very uh, joyous and, and uh, party-like scenes are not what's going on at the Pirelli Stadium there. The match between Burton and Grimsby, of course, ended with Grimsby uh, being relegated and very tense scenes there at the moment. You can see the stewards forming a barrier between the two sets of fans. We said that those fans were threatening, they were looking menacing, they were threatening to come onto the pitch and that's exactly what they've done at the end of that match. And, you know, we saw these scenes last week at Hillsborough, we saw the scenes uh, at Kenilworth Road as well and to see them again uh, this week, uh, it's, it's not what British Warnings. I thought this would, was going to develop into a situation. Fortunately, it hasn't. The police have, have, have managed to keep a lid on this one. They've now got complete control by taking a, a line of police across the, the, uh, the pitch, and it's, it has settled down, I've got to say, but no, not, not, not what you want to see. No, indeed. Let's go to uh, uh, Wembley and uh, check in uh, with Andy Barwell. They're still playing there in that match between Barrow and Stevenage. Stevenage looking to do a League and Cup double. Andy Barwell. Well, it's one apiece at the moment, Gabby. One to 12 minutes of stoppage time here because uh, Barrow's Robin Hulbert has just been sent off for a horrible, horrible challenge on the substitute for Stephen is Charlie Griffin, who's getting a massive round of applause. Griffin looks in a terrible state, blood pouring from wounds all over his face. Six paramedics have been attending him. He looks in a very, very poor condition, but he's getting the very best treatment possible. We're heading for extra time here then. Uh, the goals in the game so far... Uh, Andy Drury for Stevenage on 10 minutes and Lee McEvely, the substitute for Barrow, on 79. That made it 1-1, but extra time is looming here at Wembley. Thank you very much. Let's go to uh, Richard Ascombe at Christie Park. Morecambe are in the playoffs. Uh, they were mid-table a couple of months ago. What an incredible story. It's a great story, Gabby. Morecambe won all the shot nil, just as the home side supporters were starting to fret that it wasn't going to be their day. Morecambe found a moment of inspiration to break the deadlock. The dogged Paul Mullen worming his way past his marker to set up Gary Hunter to score. All the shot already in the playoffs, of course, coasted comfortably through the match, ticking over the order of the day for them. Christy Park, Morecambe's home for 89 years, will host one more game before they move to a new stadium next season. It could prove to be its most important yet. But there'll be no more football at Saltergate. Alan Biggs, uh, they did go out with a flourish, just missing out on the playoffs there. Yes, they did. Saltergate has its storybook ending, despite the fact that they're not in the playoffs. Chesterfield 2, Bournemouth 1, Derek Niven deep in stoppage time with the winner from 25 yards in off the post. Three goals today. Chesterfield have scored all three of them. Drew Talbot into his own net in the first half. And then in the second, two goals worthy of bringing the curtain down on this old ground. Jack Lester with a cracker from 18 yards. Niven from even further out. Chesterfield have gone out with a bang here at Saltergate. Well, we're back uh, tomorrow as well. It's the final day of the Premier League season, obviously, and uh, the big issue to be decided, just the title. Uh, we'll be on air at 3.30 on the red button and 5.30 on BBC One. But time now to get the full classified results with Tim Gudgeon. In the Coca-Cola Championship playoff semi-final, first leg, Blackpool 2, Nottingham Forest 1. In League 1, Brentford 0, Hartlepool United 0. Brighton and Hove Albion 1, Yeovil Town 0. Colchester United 1, Leighton Orient 0. Exeter City 2, Huddersfield Town 1. Leeds United 2, Bristol Rovers 1. Millwall 3, Swindon Town 2. Norwich City, nil. Carlisle United, two. Oldham Athletic, nil. Charlton Athletic, two. Southampton, three. Southend United, one. Stockport County, nil. Tranmere Rovers, three. Walsall, two. Milton Keynes Dons, one. And Wickham Wanderers, three. Gillingham, nil. 
In League Two, Barnet one, Rochdale nil. Burton Albion three, Grimsby Town nil. Cheltenham Town one, Accrington Stanley one. Chesterfield two, AFC Bournemouth one. Crew Alexandra nil, Bradford City one. Darlington nil, Dagenham and Redbridge two. Hereford United three, Rotherham United nil. Lincoln City nil, Macclesfield Town nil. Morecambe one, Aldershot Town nil. Northampton Town one, Bury one. Port Vale one, Shrewsbury Town one. And Torquay United nil, Notts County nil. In the Clydesdale Bank Scottish Premier League, Kilmarnock nil, Falkirk nil. St Johnston two, Hamilton Academical three. And St Mirren nil, Aberdeen one. Oh my God. In the Arnbrew Scottish Division 1 playoff semi final second leg, Airdrie United nil, Brecon City 1. Brecon City win 3 1 on aggregate. Alloa Athletic nil, Gardenbeath 2. Gardenbeath winning 3 1 on aggregate. In the Scottish Division 2 playoff semi final second leg, Arbroath 2, Queen's Park 2. Arbroath win on aggregate 6 2. Four for Athletic 2, East Stirlingshire 2. <coughs> Four for Athletic win, 3-2 on aggregate. In the JJB Sports Irish Cup final, Linfield 2, Portadown 1. Tim Gudgeon there, and I can tell you on this uh, week of elections, Tim Gudgeon was the voice of BBC Radio in the 1964-1966 elections. And he oh, said, Tim. Thank you very much, Tim. Let's have a little look at League One there. It's been a dramatic final day of the regular season in League One, to say the least. Leeds United are on their way back to the Championship after three years in English football's third tier. Their ten-man team came from behind to beat Bristol Rovers in an astonishing finale at Elland Road. Millwall and Charlton both occupying the second automatic promotion spot Great at goal. some point this afternoon. But they're going to have to settle for the playoff places. Um, and they're going to be joined there by Swindon and Huddersfield. Um, at the bottom, Stockport, Wickham and Southend had already been relegated before today's games and they'll be joined in League Two next season by Gillingham who lost heavily at Wickham today with everything in their hands as well. Hartlepool, who are appealing against a three-point deduction, survive on goal difference while Exeter won to extricate themselves from danger. Tranmere were in the drop zone this morning but moved to 19th after their win at Stockport. In League Two, the three automatic promotion places were already confirmed before today's games with Notts County, Bournemouth and Rochdale all going up. Morecambe, Rotherham, Aldershot and Dagenham and Redbridge will battle it out in the playoffs. Grimsby weren't able to pull off the great escape but will join Darlington in non-league football next season. Barnet and Cheltenham could have done, uh, gone down themselves uh, today but their league survival guaranteed by Grimsby's defeat. And the top six play tomorrow in the SPL. Uh, Rangers already champions. They host Motherwell, be aiming to look uh, for a Europa League spot. And Falkirk at the bottom have been relegated. They can only draw with Kilmarnock, a result which ensures Killy's SPL survival. Uh, so, incredible uh, scenes uh, there uh, for you. Let's have a little look at uh, the headlines. So, Leeds United back in the championship with a 2-1 win over Bristol Rovers. out there of course tamed by Swindon 3-2 the final score there at the den after 99 years in the football league Grimsby are down beat at the Pirelli Stadium some nasty scenes afterwards as the crowd invaded the pitch Barnet though are safe scenes of joy there they beat Rochdale already promoted of course 1-0 Blackpool have got first blood against Nottingham Forest. One of those two could be in the Premier League next season. Manish can clear up all the Football League for you tonight at 10 past 11 on BBC One. The Premier League shuts up shop tomorrow. Uh, Gary and the Allens on at 10.25 on BBC One. And uh, what a final day that could be. Um, although I think it would have to go some to eclipse the excitement <laughs> and tension that we've had in the final score studio this afternoon. Of course, uh, the big story of the day, Leeds United uh, going back to the Championship after looking like they'd thrown it all away. I mean, you know, it looked like they'd self-destructed in the first half. And we've seen Leeds form yeah. dip considerably since Christmas. But, you know, that first 45 minutes... 
It was almost a seminal moment, there. wasn't it? It wasn't, but it was almost. There was a, a disallowed, we thought, a perfectly legitimate disallowed goal from Beckford. And Gradle somehow finds um, it, it, craziness to stamp on, on, on Jones. And, and all of a sudden... It. And loses it. They, they are te down to ten men, and you're looking at it and thinking, well, to be honest, the way that Millwall are playing, they're going to have to probably need to win this game. They go a goal down just after half-time. I think, to be fair best time for them, probably the best oh. thing for them, believe it or not, because it concentrated their minds. They went and had 20 minutes of real pressure, two moments of quality. They get ahead and then they hang on. And you've got to say, I don't think anyone is going to begrudge Leeds getting promoted, to be fair. And let's have a look at the scenes at Elland Road. 2-1 uh, Leeds eventually, of course, beat Bristol Rovers. And the relief, the Leeds fans have been three years in the third tier of English football. It's extraordinary because there's a, there's a, there's a, there's a moment in the game where you look at the fans and they're so nervous, they're so tense, uh, and it's a complete contrast to some rather unpleasant scenes at Burton. Indeed, at the Pirelli Stadium, we saw uh, the crowds, the Grimsby fans uh, coming onto the pitch, and then the stewards and the policemen having to uh, form a line across the pitch to stop the fans from joining up with each other, but that didn't stop them throwing some missiles uh, towards each other. And it's just what we don't want to see, especially there you see the missiles being thrown after those scenes last week, hoardings being pulled down um, at Kenilworth Road and at Hillsborough, indeed. And uh, this is not good. I mean, you know, it was reflected in during the week in a lot of the newspapers that with a World Cup bid uh, coming to a head later yes. this year for, for England, for the, you know, for the FA, that's not C good news. Can I, can I say, I thought the stewards and the police did remarkably well during, what, to half an hour that. of very, very intense moments. Let, let, let's, make, let, let's make no bones about this. You need police on that occasion. Stewards... Are, are, you know, well, they they're well, they're not they're, qualified to do, no, to do and, and, that, and, are they, the, so. and those type of people are not respected of stewards, whereas police, it just sort of Diffuses takes the edge off it a little bit. Yeah. Diffuses the situation somewhat. Um, uh, let's uh, tell you a little bit more about uh, that Leeds United uh, victory over Bristol Rovers' promotion to the Championship. In fact, better still, let's see it. Martin Fisher is your commentator. Kilkenny. Becchio. Kilkenny on for Beckford. Flag is up, it won't count, it won't count, the flag was up. Leeds will claim that it came off a Bristol Rovers boot last. Now then, there's trouble here, and it's all kicking off. Well, Mikel Anderson, quick to drag his player, Daniel Jones, away from it all. The referee Graham Salisbury in deep conversation here with Paul Martin, the man that put the flag up. Now here it is, Daniel Jones comes across to Gradle and Gradle's just stamped on his foot and the red card is shown to Max Gradle and Leeds United are down to ten men and Gradle is furious. Boos as Jones receives it far side. Duffy and Kafour in the box. All the white shirts and yellow back there. Jones with the cross, Kafour is arriving and pulls it back and Duffy and a goal! Leeds United went to sleep and Duffy puts Bristol Rovers in front. Johnson. Slipped as he struck it, but it will reach Beckia. Teeing up House to Kerlitz! Wonderful goal, Johnny Housen! Belief is back around Ellen Road. It's 1-1. Bromby's long throw. Collins attacking it. Poor throw out by Anderson, first to it is Johnson. Johnson! Beckford! 2-1 Leeds! Bristol Rovers are falling apart and Leeds United suddenly go in front. What a turnaround at Allen Road! Simon, congratulations. You don't believe in doing it the easy way though, do you? No, they certainly don't and uh, obviously... We, yes! Uh, yes! Going down to ten men was obviously going to be a difficult ask for us, but we believed that we'd keep doing it. We knew we'd get opportunities. There are fantastic bunch of players to work with. Even when we went one down, we still believed we would get it. And uh, full credit to them. They've been a joy to work with all season, and uh, they've got the just rewards. And this football club has got the just rewards. You, as a, as a Leeds fan, know more than most what it means to those supporters out there, I guess. Yeah, to be right, it does. But my own professional pride is I want to get a promotion on my CV. It's even better that it's the club that I supported and, and started my career with. It's all about the football club in general. It's absolutely fantastic achievement and one that we're going to treasure tonight. And we're all... <laughs>
might be a few small parties in Leeds uh, this evening. <laughs> uh, well done, Simon Grayson. Well done, Leeds United. They did do it the hard way, though. I mean, they were roaring ahead at the, the top reason, of the division before Christmas. Gary, Carl. the reason that I'm pleased for, for, for Simon and the players was they went, through, they went for it throughout the season. In the FA Cup, they went for it. They went for it in every stage of the season. And uh, they nearly jeopardised their chance of getting promotion. It was high-risk stuff. But they've got to the finishing line. Let's be line. honest, you've got the feeling, watching them today and watching them over the last two or three months, mm. if they hadn't done it here, you fear for them in the playoffs and you probably feared for them next year because there's going to be some, you know, Southampton, Sheffield Wednesday, possibly the Millwalls and that. Any chance of Jermaine it. Beckford not Tough moving division. on, do you think, or is he destined, possibly. destined I mean, to play why, in the why would you want Why do you want to go anywhere else when you've got a, you know, a club who can get 40,000 people in it? They're the only club that kept, could have kept him in that league this year. They did. They can, they, can, you know, they can give him the money that he wants. That's not going to be an issue. And I'm sure they and can... what a brilliant uh, you know, performance, a captain's performance. It was, uh, it was. I mean, he hasn't started, Gabby. No. Last four or five if games. I, well, we were questioning before the match, would he start? He starts yeah. as captain Gabby, and, and scores the winning goal. If I was Gradle, I would give, I would give Beckford half my bonus. <laughs> so you did say your wages, but he's revised that. Revised it. Half his wages bonus five minutes ago. For keeping me away from their free because Gradle had lost it. He was making his way to the referee. And Beckford stopped it. Do you know what, though? Gradle's sending off turn the match, believe. I think yeah, it, ended, yeah. it ended up... It ended up focus their minds, didn't yeah, it? Yeah, I think they should thank him. <laughs> <laughs> uh, OK, well, the early kickoff uh, today was the Championship playoff first leg between Blackpool and Nottingham Forest. And uh, commentary on this one from Alistair Mann. Well judged by Baptiste. It was a terrific effort! Out of nothing by Cohen! He just hit across the ball with the outside of the boot. A wonderful goal. And that'll settle any nerves. Support from Coleman. Still with Coleman. Is he working a shooting opportunity? Efforts. And it must be from Southern. 1 1. Nottingham Forest pulled to the right, then to the left, and they left a gap in the middle. And Southern managed to find the equaliser. They weren't behind for long. Here's Ormerod. And was that a foul on Campbell? Yes. Penalty Blackpool. This was the moment. Perch missed the ball, got DJ Campbell. Charlie Adam, can he give Blackpool the lead? You bet he can. Blackpool, 2-1 up. So it's first blood to Ian Holloway's uh, men. Of course, they go back to Forest on Tuesday. 2-1, uh, is that enough, do you feel, to uh, propel them into the final? Not or, um, sure. Can you see sure. more from Forest in this tie? It'll need, it'll need a little bit more in the last third than I saw from Blackpool on Tuesday, I think, to beat Nottingham at, at the Forest ground. Uh, let's uh, just uh, draw a line under today's drama and look forward to tomorrow's drama. Uh, can you see anything other than Chelsea lifting the Premier League trophy? No, no. Uh, I, th I think, to be fair, uh, we, you know, we all know we're going to have beaten them this season, but uh, I just don't see that happening again tomorrow. They're, 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 I'm sure they'll make it difficult, but no, Chelsea will win. They'd love game. to spoil the party, Wigan, wouldn't they? They would, but they won't. No? You sure of that? No, I'm, I've never been more sure of anything in my life. <laughs> Chelsea will win that championship. The, the, the nerves will be jingling a little bit, though, won't they, for the Chelsea Yeah, no, players? no, I mean, we've seen a couple of nervous performances mm. from them. Of late, you know, the Bolton game where, you know, they, they won that 1-0, they took a lead and then sort of hung on. But you just get the feeling they'll go for this right from the start, go for the throat, and I think that... They've they experienced will. Barcelona, they've experienced Inter. They don't want to feel like that again. Uh, but they won't be uh, winning 7-0 tomorrow. Probably not. <laughs> One might do. <laughs> OK, thank you very much, uh, Garth and Steve, for your company this afternoon. I think you both agree. It was an, an afternoon, of, afternoon of high drama. And, uh, yeah, yeah we've, we've, we're all a little bit pooped here. But we'll be back <laughs> for more tomorrow. If you've enjoyed what you've seen today, uh, then come back for a bit more tomorrow. Uh, it's the final day of the Premier League season. We'll be on the red button from 3.30 and on BBC One at 5.30. But our shot of the day today, well, there's nowhere else we could go other than Elland Road. I mean, they try, they try. They put the sign up there telling you what to do and what not to do and they say, please keep off the pitch. It's good advice, but, you know, to be fair, a few people have... Well, they didn't do it, did they? From all of us. Bye-bye. <laughs>